Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and it is, as you can tell, yeah. as you can tell by this crowd, it is Friday, and <laughs> that means... And if to you that means blowing off work to chillax with your buds, then you are the president of the United States. Because <laughs> we just learned that last year, Trump spent one out of every five days at one of his golf clubs. And remember, when Trump is golfing, we're paying for it. And we might not know the full cost for a while, thanks to Treasury Secretary and kid on Bring Your Child to Work Day watching his dad get chewed out by the boss, <laughs> Steve Mnuchin. Mnuch. He's trying to hide how much taxpayers have spent sending Trump on his golf outings. He wants to delay disclosure of Secret Service spending on presidential travel until after the 2020 election. <laughs> Not telling us that till after we vote is like sharing your STD history with your partner <laughs> after you have sex. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, hey, it's cool, babe. That tingling sensation means the sex is working. <laughs> And it's never going to stop working, baby. <laughs> we do know the Secret Service bill is going to be pretty big. For example, we spent $96 million on Barack Obama over eight years. But in 2017, we spent $13.6 million on Trump in just one month. And over the past two years, we spent $588,000 on Secret Service golf carts alone. That's a lot. But golf carts are critical security vehicles. They can be overtaken only if the terrorists discover walking briskly. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. Now. <laughs> but we're not just paying for Trump. We're also covering the cost of all the little Trumplings. <laughs> for instance, a few years back, Eric Trump's visit to a Trump building in Uruguay cost taxpayers $97,000. So when you think about it, it's not really Uruguay. It's all of our guay. <laughs> Most of that money was spent teaching Eric that it's not pronounced you are gay. <laughs> We're also... That's a twofer. That's a twofer. Double dip. Oh, yeah, you Double gotta get to right it there. if you can. Get to it. We're also learning more about what went on behind the scenes during Iran's attack on U.S. military bases this week. Apparently, the White House received an early warning message from spy agencies that officials call a squawk. <laughs> Normally, when you hear a squawk in the White House, that means it's time to feed Stephen Miller. <laughs> and as soon... <laughs> as soon as he got the warning, Trump descended several flights of stairs to the Situation Room. <laughs> wow, that does not sound like Trump. What on earth could have motivated him to shamble down several flights of stairs to the Situation Room and there were sandwiches piled on the sideboard <laughs> in the room? Gentlemen, we have incoming ballistic hoagies. <laughs> Alert Colonel Mustard at Strategic Sauce Command. It's also been revealed that the night of the airstrike against Soleimani, Trump was pulled away from his dinner of meatloaf and ice cream. <laughs> Though that could be a misprint, it's possible it was ice cream with meatloaf. <laughs> Trump's international whoopsies haven't been helping his reputation. According to a new poll from the Pew Research Center, 64% of people worldwide said they did not have confidence in President Trump. In fact, foreigners trust him less than Angela Merkel, Emmanuel Macron, Xi Jinping, and Vladimir Putin. But hey, he is still polling ahead of Jeffrey Dahmer, Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> and one of the Menendez brothers. <laughs> now, which one? Lyle? Oh. Lyle. He's ahead of Lyle. What's the other one? Menendez. Trevor? Brad? <laughs> one country where the president is as popular as a pine cone suppository <laughs> is Slovenia, where vandals burned a wooden statue of him. Police are still investigating, and they have released this security footage of the Slovenian woman they believe is behind the attack. 